I've got a fall candle burning and a pumpkin chai in my hand. Life is good. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Liz and today we are going to be doing my We'll see if editing Liz can make that sound cooler than what it just sounded like. But yes, today we are going to talk about my fall TBR. This is one that I have been so excited to talk about and I've been building this fall TBR for months now. I've honestly, to the start of summer, I started creating my fall TBR because I was so excited for fall. Fall is my all-time favorite season. I love everything about fall. I know it's not technically fall just yet. However, I am filming this ahead of time. So that way, if you are like me and you like to prepare ahead of time what books you're going to be reading that season, then you'll get to see what I will be reading this upcoming season. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, the fall season, I like to read a lot of cozy books. I also like to read a lot of thrillers and mysteries and that kind of thing. So I have a mixture of books for this season. I do have a good handful of mystery thrillers. I also have a handful of some like darker romances. And then I also have a handful of fantasies. So let's talk about them. So the first book that is on my fall TBR is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Now, this is a mystery thriller. Like I said, I'm going to start with all my mystery thrillers first, then get into dark romances, and then get into my fantasy. So that's the order of this video. With this book, it follows a mom who is trying to solve the murder her son committed. Yes, you heard that right. She saw her son commit a murder. She's trying to figure out what happened, what went wrong, why he did this, but there's a twist. Every day that she wakes up, she wakes up one day in the past. So the first time she wakes up, it's one day before. Then the next time she wakes up, it's the day before that, and so on and so forth. And she's basically going back in time to find the root cause of why her son committed this crime. I think this sounds very interesting. I'm really excited to read it. This is a very fun concept of time travel and also solving a murder. So I think it'll be really fun to read this fall. Next up, you guys already kind of got a sneak peek on this book because I actually went and bought it in a day in my life because I was getting some fall books. And that is You'd Look Better as a Ghost by Joanna Wallace. Honestly, picked it up because of the cover. The title grabbed me, but this basically follows a cat and mouse game between a serial killer and her blackmailer. So I think it sounds really really, really interesting. It also sounds like it's going to be very funny, like very dry sense of humor. Next up, we have Blood Sisters by Vanessa Lilly. I actually got this for Christmas from my brother last year. It's taken me a while to finally get around to it, but I feel like this is the perfect time to read this book. Basically, this is about an archaeologist. She is brought in to investigate the disappearance of two missing women, one of which is her sister. For whatever reason, this kind of sounds very similar to like a Criminal Minds episode I have watched. So that's also part of the reason why I'm really excited to read this book. And the next few mystery thrillers that are on my list, I don't have them just yet, but I will be getting them soon. And the first one is That's Not My Name by Megan Lally. One of the reasons why I really wanted to read this book was because I saw someone commented on it and said that if you were a fan of Natalie D. Richards or Vincent Ralph, which are two mystery thriller authors that I absolutely love, then you would enjoy this book in this writing style. But basically this book is about a girl who wakes up very bruised on the side of the road with no memory, a man shows up at the police station claiming he's her father. Now I say claiming because I know there's probably going to be something else going on at the same time. Next we have Kill the Boys by Christina Alexandra. This book follows a girl who I believe she moves to this brand new small town and a boy does take advantage of her and so she then creates a sisterhood if you will of girls who are going to seek retribution against all of the boys in town who have ever wronged a girl. This just sounds very interesting. Um, it also sounds very similar similar to The Collective, which I read a few months ago back in the winter, but make it teenage girls. Next up, we have The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Moldevsky. This book is about a girl who gets recruited into a secret society of students. This whole group, they do these things called fear tests, and it's basically all of these pranks and tests that are all based on common horror movie tropes. But as the tests escalate, this girl has to become the ultimate final girl. Next up, we have How I'll Kill You by Ren de Stefano. This story follows three sisters who all make men fall in love with them and then kill them. So it's three sisters who are all serial killers and they hunt and prey on men. However, our main character, she is the youngest sister and when she accidentally falls in love with her prey, she has to decide what is stronger, family or love. Sounds very fun. Very excited. Now we're going to get into some of my darker romances. I feel like How I'll Kill You could be considered dark romance, but I think it was like a psychological thriller. So I have no clue. Next up, we have 
Leather and Lark by Bryn Weaver. I talked about this once again in my day in my life where I was buying ballish books for this upcoming season. This is the second book after, that comes after Butcher and Blackbird. So it is about some serial killers who are falling in love. However, this one follows the brother of the main guy in the first book. And it is a fake marriage between him and then the girl who is the friend of the main girl in the first book. Very excited because in the first book you did get glimpses of these two characters. So I'm really excited to see their story. Next up, we have Phantom Heart by Kelly Cray. This book is actually inspired by Phantom of the Opera. So if you've ever watched or heard of that, it follows our main girl who is in a love triangle between a boy who is obsessed with the paranormal and the boy in her dreams, literally. Next up, we have Strange Unearthly Things. This is by the exact same author, Kelly Cray. This is also based on another story. It is based off of Jane Eyre. This story follows a psychic artist who can draw the paranormal. So she draws what she sees, which is the paranormal. She gets called in to investigate at this manor that has to do with paranormal. They need her expertise. While she's there, she gets to interact with the very handsome proprietor of the estate. Next up, we have a dark romance that I do not own just yet, but I will be ordering it or buying it very soon. And that is Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. This is about a girl who wakes up chained in a basement with her arch rival from school. I'm very excited. And they are gonna then have to work together to make it out alive. And next we have a young adult romance mystery. That is The Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the same author as the Inheritance Games trilogy. So if you've read that, same author. This is based in the same world and it takes place after that trilogy happens. It follows the brothers, Grayson and Jameson. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about this book. A lot of people have said that they wished that all four brothers had a part in this book. You definitely will see those characters, but they wish that they could see their, they had their own chapters and their viewpoint. I'm excited. I know that with Jennifer Lynn Barnes, her writing style is very quick, very easy to read. It does follow the two brothers as they go on their own two quests or mysteries that they have to solve. It's all about riddles. And I think that's just so cozy for the fall. Now we're going to get into the fantasies that I have for this season. The first one is Apprentice to the Villain by Anna Nicole Mayer. I read the first book last fall and I really, really enjoyed it. It was Assistant to the Villain. It takes place right after that book and it is following an assistant to the villain. So plot twist. The best way for me to describe the vibe of this book is think Despicable Me, how cute and funny that movie is or those movies are. And if the minions were a young woman and Gru was a handsome grumpy guy. Next up, we have The Girl Who Can Move Stuff With Her Mind by Jackson Ford. This is actually a recommendation from my friend Alex. He's been wanting me to read this for a while. So shout out, Alex. I'm finally going to read this book. It is a series. I think there's four. This book follows a girl with telekinetic powers who works for the government. And when she is on one of her cases, she comes across a dead body that was murdered in a way that only someone with her powers could do or could pull off. So she has to figure out who did this. So it is a mystery. So that way she can clear her name. Next up, we have The Hunting Moon by Susan Dennard. This is the second book after The Luminaries, which I read this past spring. The Luminaries is a book that I recommend for fall. I know that the third book is also coming out this fall. So after I read the hunting moon i will most likely continue and finish and read the third book as well it's about this world where this forest that surrounds the town at night these nightmares are kind of like hatched in the forest and these people in this town are hunters and they have to go out and hunt these nightmares to protect everyone and our main character she went through these trials to try to clear her family name since they had a bad reputation in the first book and this i'm assuming picks up right where we left off and i know with the way the first book ended there's a lot of secrets and things that you kind of slowly unpack in the first book and I know that a lot of those will most likely be answered in this book so I'm very very excited to read it. Next up we have A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Eisel. This story follows a girl who runs a tea room by day and then it turns into a blood house by night for vampires. When her tea room is threatened she has to hatch a plan and also form a group of people to infiltrate the vampire society. So that just sounded very interesting to me. It sounds like it's going to be like a heist type scenario. I don't know what it is about that mixed with vampires. That just sounds like the perfect fall read. Next up we have The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. I read The Drowned Woods by the same author over a year ago and I really really enjoyed it. That book was such a fun standalone. I highly recommend it by the way. So I wanted to read another book by the same author in The Bone Houses. This follows a female grave digger and an apprentice map 
maker kind of have team up. and i don't really know much more about it than that also another thing that really drew me to the story was that one of the things online read it's a mixture between buffy the vampire slayer and sky in the deep which i've never read sky in the deep but i know exactly what book that is and so hearing that that's like the combination of this book just sounds very fascinating and i'm very excited to read it next up we have the wolf and the woodsman by ava reed this story follows a woman who is very powerless in her world every so often the king requires a blood sacrifice and so her villagers kind of turn on her and give her up to the king's soldiers as the sacrifice however while they are transporting her through the woods a group of monsters attacks them and it leaves our main character and the one-eyed captain who are the only survivors and they kind of have to survive together figure out how to get out this book though sounds very similar to for the wolf which i very much enjoyed that duology so i'm really excited about this book as well and next up we have one dark window by rachel gillick i've heard amazing things about this book. It's taken me so long to finally get to the point where I would purchase and read this book, but it is finally time. I knew that I could not go another year or another season without finally reading this story. I don't know too much about it except that it's a gothic fantasy. It says it's a beautifully dark fairy tale of blood, rage, and bitter choice that whisked me away to mist wreathed woods ripe with romance and menace. Sounds fun. <laughs> And last but not least, we have sort of a reread, but not really. And that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I read this book, I think I read the first two and then half of the third book years ago and I enjoyed them, but I can't really remember the world. So I'm gonna reread them and then try to finish the series. And also at the same time, I know that there was a spinoff series that was going on at the same time. And that is A Light in the Flame and I think a Flesh and Fire novel. So this is a part of that world. I think this is like a spinoff of of some of the gods or goddesses that are talked about in this book and it's talking about their origin story I think I honestly don't know I've heard mixed reviews on it some people love it and some people hate it so I'm very curious to see where I'm gonna fall on that scale and now I'm finally continuing it these were some really thick books that have been sitting on my shelf for years now and I want to finally get through them to say that I have finished this series <gasps> Here we go. This is a very um, ambitious TBR. And this this isn't even all of them. And I am already kind of uh, nervous, but also very excited to finally tackle these books. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this gave you some good recommendations or just some new ideas for fall. These are just the books that I have been waiting patiently to finally get my hands on. I'm very excited to read them. This will knock off so many books off of my physical TBR. And I'm so, so happy about that because that was one of my goals for this year is to get through a lot of the books that I already owned. And and I feel like I'm finally accomplishing that. Get ready for lots of fall content. I'm so, so excited. I haven't brought all of my fall decorations out yet. I'm gonna probably do that next week. I do have a fall candle lit and I'm already drinking pumpkin flavored drinks. So it's basically fall for me now. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Happy reading, bye.